So Trump called a press conference in the Rose Garden recently, usually reserved for, you know, really big issues and stuff. What did he do? He announced um, a move to escalate with China over Hong Kong. Not exactly something I would handle at this moment in history when you still have a pandemic spreading like wildfire and it's out of control and you have the actual unemployment rate over 20%. Uh, and you have a foreclosure and eviction crisis. You got all these other issues to handle, and you're going right to, let's escalate with China. It seems like a dumb idea, but Trump brought that up at the beginning of his speech in the Rose Garden. What did he proceed to do the rest of the speech? He was basically doing a campaign rally, going after Joe Biden, in honestly what looked to me like one of the most desperate attempts to do that of all time. Biden is a target that is ripe for criticism. I got a million things I could say about Joe Biden to tear him down. I mean, his record is abysmal. He's a neoliberal corporatist through and through. He was for all these terrible, criminal, immoral, disastrous wars. You know, we can go on and on, right? That stuff wasn't really brought up by Trump. He's using the dumbest strategy I've ever heard in my entire life. So here's just, you know, I think this is like two or three moments from... Trump's speech, and you can see how desperate this looks. And we saved tens of thousands of lives, but we actually saved millions of lives by closing. By closing up, we saved millions, potentially millions of lives. Could be a number that we're actually working on, but it could be two to three million lives. So we're at 135,000, which is terrible. One is too much, but we would have had millions of People dead from this curse that came at us. But we did what we had to do, and now we'll put out the flames as it, as it happens. We have to get the schools open. We have to get everything open. They, a lot of people don't want to do that for political reasons, not for other reasons. But if we had listened to Joe Biden, hundreds of thousands of additional lives would have been lost. And if you look at the job he did on swine flu, I looked at a poll. They have polls on everything nowadays. And uh, he, they got very bad marks on the job they did on the swine flu, H1N1. He calls it N1H1. H1N1. Got very poor marks from Gallup on the job they did on swine flu. I guess the stock market went up almost 500 points today or something thereabouts. You'll check. But it was up a lot when I left. And our economy is coming back. We're almost at a level where, even though it's long before the very important, maybe the most important ever, election of November 3rd, we're long before that, but we're close to record stock markets again. And NASDAQ hit an all-time high for the 16th time. Think of that. For the 16th time over the last month or so for the 16th time. So one of our markets already hit an all-time high. Are you out of your mind? Are you dense? Okay, homeboy's bragging about the NASDAQ and the stock market when we have 20% actual unemployment, 32% of the country couldn't pay their freaking bills last month. We're going to have an eviction and foreclosure crisis. And you're talking about the stock market going up. Just so everybody understands, 10% of the country owns 92% of the stocks. The richest 10% own the stocks. So when you brag about the stock market, basically you're saying, you know, it's really wonderful because what we're seeing here is that the rich are still rich and maybe even getting richer. It's really a wonderful thing, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, that's not... That's like literally the last indicator I would use. It's actually a double whammy with the stock market because when it goes down, regular people do get screwed because then people lose their jobs because the wealthy will fire those people. But when it goes up, it's privatize the gains, socialize the losses. So when it goes up, it really only helps the wealthy. So, but that's like, if you created a list of all the economic indicators, the health of the stock market is at the very bottom in terms of how it would affect your average person. Like I said, we got 20% actual unemployment, and we have an eviction and foreclosure crisis, and we got people, even people who still have their jobs, took massive pay cuts. Virtually everybody I know personally, and I know this is anecdotal, but you talk to them and everybody's like, yeah, I got a 15% pay cut, or yeah, we everybody in my department got a 20% pay cut. This is what we're dealing with. 
And Trump is out there bragging as we hit record COVID numbers, bro. He... Okay, sorry for the beeping of the computer. He brought up swine flu. He brought up swine flu. You know how many people died in the swine flu pandemic? 3,400. You know how many died uh, with COVID in the United States? And this is just so far. We're not even close to done yet. Not even close to done. We're, all, we're at a new record high. 130,000 from COVID just so far. He's hitting Biden on swine flu when 3,400 people died. On his watch, COVID, 130,000 and climbing rapidly died. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm going to unplug this because it's going to beep nonstop. Okay, maybe I'll just leave it like that now, even though it's going to beep again. <laughs> this is what happens when you have old laptops and you're live. You get random noises. Anyway, um, and then he brags. You can't, you're not allowed to brag when it comes to anything involving COVID because this is like the most abysmal failure I've ever seen. It's the United States and Brazil stand out alone around the world. Everybody else managed to get it under, under control and there were different strategies everywhere else, but they did manage to get it under control. Us in Brazil are just abysmal and pathetic. But he bragged about banning flights from China. Well, that how'd that work out? Did we stop COVID from spreading here? No, we didn't do that at all. One policy, if we just did universal masks from early on and everybody wore a mask, I told you guys, China, uh, not, excuse me, not China, um, Japan, now they've made mistakes, it wasn't perfect, they, sh they shut down sectors here and there of the economy, but they didn't do a total economic shutdown like we did, they had less than a thousand COVID deaths. Why? Because everybody wears a mask. If we had just done universal masks early on, there's no way we would have had this abysmal, this abysmal record-setting level of cases and deaths. And then he goes on to say, we have to get the schools open. We have to get the schools open. You know, other people maybe want to shut them down, but they only want to shut them down for political reasons. I can guarantee you every single person who wants to shut the schools down, they want to shut it down because they don't want to die and they don't want kids to die and they don't want kids to spread it to older family members. Like, that's why people want to shut down the schools. They... Th Trump really believes the reason why people might not want to open schools is to hurt him politically. Well, if you force the schools open, as Trump wants to do, then you're going to spread the cases way more, and that's going to hurt you as well. See, you messed this up so bad, Trump, that there's no way for you to, for you to win, because... If you shut the schools down, yes, that, that does have a lot of negative consequences associated with it, and it makes life a lot harder if you're doing learning at home as much as possible. You know, parents probably get annoyed by that and a million other things. But if you send it back to school, well, you don't have COVID under control, so more people are going to get sick, so there are no good answers. So what does he do? He goes out there and deflects, blames Biden for swine flu... And then goes on to brag about the stock market. I mean, this is embarrassing stuff. Guys, again, it's now every single day. The more evidence I see, the more Trump talks. Like that, that win percentage chance for Biden just keeps steadily climbing every day. I mean, we're at like 80% chance of a Biden victory right now. And that might keep climbing because the Trump is just... He's botched this in so many ways, and his strategy is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. How you gonna, when you have an economic depression and a pandemic, and you go out there and announce new sanctions on China over Hong Kong, adding another thing to a list of things that are a pain in the ass and difficult to deal with and are tense, that's not something that's stable. You're creating another problem in the midst of a thousand problems, and then the rest of the freaking speech is just you bashing Biden. With any and every idea you could possibly come up with. You got swine flu. You're hitting him because he wants to keep the schools closed to save lives. Bragging about the market. It. His political instincts are gone because he's so drunk on Fox News and One American News Network. And he's surrounded by terrible advisors who are wrong about everything. Um, and yeah, his campaign staffers too clearly have no idea what they're doing. 
So again, Biden should thank his lucky stars because he doesn't have to say anything. He doesn't have to do anything. He could keep hiding in the basement and he could win in a landslide. Because as long as Trump's using strategies like this, the entire country's rolling their eyes. You think I'm the only one who's watching this going like, what are you doing? Virtually every normal person in the country watching this was like, what, san sanctions on China right now? What, with everything going, you're going to focus on China. Get COVID under control. What are you doing? Get it under control. Fix the economy. 20% real unemployment. You're bragging about the economy? You're talking about the NASDAQ, bro. You're talking about the NASDAQ right now. You brought up swine flu? Swine flu? Swine flu. <laughs> oh, man. Abysmal. I've never seen somebody lose all of their political instincts in a faster, more devastating way than Trump.